So far, our Python code executes the exact same statements, no matter what the user input is. The videos for this chapter demonstrate the if statement that allows you to write code that selects which statements are executed based on the values of expressions. We'll revisit one of the first programs we learned. Here is the program to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We'll modify it to print warnings if it's very hot or very cold. After we print out the converted temperature, here is the pseudocode from the book that describes what we want to do. If it's hot, we want to warn them, or if it's cold, we want to warn them. The Python statements that do this are very similar to this pseudocode. We'll use the figures from the book to demonstrate how the if statement works. The Python keyword if allows us to write code that is only executed if the condition after the if statement is true. Similar to the for loop, the code we want to do if the condition is true is indented underneath the if statement. And since the body or statements for the if statement are indented, the if statement has a colon at the end of the line after the condition. The semantics of the if statement are that the condition is evaluated. If the condition is true, the body of the if statement is executed, and then it continues with the code after the if statement. If the condition is false, it skips the body and continues with the code after the if statement. Here is a flowchart representation of that. We check the condition specified in the if statement. If it is true, we execute the statements that are indented below the if statement and continue afterwards. If the condition is false, we skip the statements that are indented after the if statement. Note that decision statements are written in flowcharts using a diamond shape, while other statements are written using rectangles. Here is a flowchart diagram for the entire program. We start with the original program that inputs the Celsius temperature and outputs the corresponding Fahrenheit temperature. After that, it continues and checks if it's warmer than 90 degrees. If so, it prints a heat warning. Whether or not it was hot, it then checks if it's less than 30 degrees, and if so, prints out a cold warning. Note that only one of these two conditions can be true for a given temperature. It can't be very hot and very cold at the same time in the same location. Now let's look at the code in PyCharm. Here is the code from before. Now we can see the if statement in Python is very similar to the pseudocode we looked at before. Let's debug this and see how it works. We'll enter negative 2 and step through it. Note the first condition is false, so the heat warning is skipped. The second condition is true, so it prints the cold warning. And finally, it executes the print statement that tells us to have a nice day. Let's debug it again and enter 20. The heat condition is false, so the heat warning is skipped. The cold condition is false, so the cold warning is skipped. And finally, it executes the print statement that tells us to have a nice day. We'll debug it one more time and enter 35. The heat condition is true, so it prints the heat warning. The cold condition is false, so the cold warning is skipped. And finally, it executes the print statement that tells us to have a nice day. So note that the code that is not indented underneath an if statement is always executed, as we've seen in all our earlier programs. The code indented underneath an if statement is only executed when the condition for the if statement is true. This diagram shows the comparison operators that are used for conditions. Note that since we need to enter them using keys on the keyboard, we do not write them as we commonly do in mathematics. Less than or equal and greater than or equal are written with two consecutive characters. It is easy to remember the order to write them if you think about how you say them. You always say less than or equal, so the less than sign is first and then the equal sign. Since we already used the single equal sign for the assignment operator, when we want to check if two expressions are equal, we use two consecutive equal signs. Leaving off the second one is a common mistake beginners make, but fortunately in Python writing code such as if x equals 3 with one equal sign is a syntax error and Python will tell you that. The exclamation point in an equal sign is used to write not equals in Python. Again, you can remember the order as you say not equals, so the exclamation is first and the equal sign is second. Numbers compare as you would expect. Smaller numbers are less than larger numbers. You can compare ints and floats even though they are different types. Remember that floating point numbers are not stored exactly. In general, it's a bad idea to compare two floating point values to see if they're equal. A better way is to subtract them and take the absolute value and check if that result is small enough that you consider the numbers equal. Strings compare using their ASCII values. Because the ASCII values go in alphabetical order, this means strings containing letters will compare in alphabetical order as long as the strings are the same case. The string A is less than the string B. The string A is not equal to the string capital A since they have different ASCII values. The uppercase A is less than the lowercase a because the uppercase A is a smaller ASCII value.
This can have strange results when the strings are not the same case. The string capital B is less than the lowercase a because of their ASCII values. When the first characters of two strings are the same, it uses the second character to break the tie. And if the second characters are the same, it uses the third character, and so on. Aardvark is less than anvil, as a is less than n. If all the characters match between two strings except one has extra characters at the end, the shorter string is less than the longer string. Python allows you to compare two different types for equality, and if the types are different, the expressions are different. This first example is not true because they are not the same type. The second example that is checking if they are not equal is true because they are not the same type. This can lead to subtle errors, so be careful when comparing if two expressions are equal or not equal. Generally, you want the expressions to be the same type if you're going to compare them. Python will not let you compare two different operators using the less than or greater than operators. We'll look at the original quadratic equation program from an earlier chapter and video. If we run it and enter 1, 1, and 1, the program crashes because the program tries to calculate the square root of a negative number. Now that we know how to use the if statement, we can fix this. This example uses an if statement to check if the discriminant is non-negative. If we run it and enter 1, 1, and negative 6, we see that it outputs the answer. But now if we run it and enter 1, 1, and 1, we see that it doesn't crash because it didn't execute lines 12 through 15 since the discriminant was negative. It's a little strange that we don't see any output. Based on what we saw with the temperature conversion example, we could add a second if statement that checks if the discriminant is negative and output the answer. This version does that, and when we run it with 1, 1, and 1, we see the output of no real roots. In this situation, only one of the two conditions can be true. Python and most programming languages have a better way to handle this than two separate if statements. Here's the syntax diagram for the variation on the if statement that adds an else clause. The semantics of this are that if the condition is true, the statements indented underneath the if statement are executed, and the statements indented underneath the else statement are not executed. If the condition is false, the statements underneath the if statement are skipped, and the statements underneath the else statement are executed. So one of these two sets of statements is always executed, but both are never executed. And then after that, it continues with the code that is indented at the same level as the E in the else statement. Note that there is never any condition or other code after the else. The only character to place after the else clause is a colon. We'll now look at the quadratic equation example using an if-else statement. In this case, there's one statement to execute if the condition is true, and then if the condition is false, then we have four statements to execute. In either case, the code continues and executes the print statement on line 19. We'll run it with 1, 1, 1, and we see that the output shows no real roots and that math is fun. When we run it with 1, 1, negative 6, we see the two roots and that math is fun.